this time on the Families Matter Most podcast. I don't want my kids, right? I don't want them to obey me because I told them they have to or else. I want my kids to obey me because it's the right thing to do. And it doesn't always happen. I know that. But this is the goal. We want our kids to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Every time Jen Dean speaks, I can see hope, knowledge, expertise, wisdom, and love. When Jen Dean speaks about parenting, we make sure that we are there to listen because we know we will get valuable advice. Families Matter Most with Jen Dean. She doesn't just give skills for us to be better parents, but she teaches us how to reach our children's hearts. And at the end of the day, that's what truly matters. What do you do when your kid says no? You ask them to do something. Hey, come here, come to the table for supper. It's time to put your stuff away and get ready for bed. And they just look you straight in the eye and say, no. We're gonna talk about defiance today. What can you do for little kids and for older kids? If you've got teenagers, young adults that are treating you this way, stay tuned on this podcast. We're gonna tackle all of that today. Defiance. That's the hardest thing, isn't it? That's the hardest thing about parenting. I can help you solve problems. We can talk about building character in our kids. But when I lose it <laughs> is when my kids look me in the eye and just, it's almost like I could see into their brains and, and they're thinking, I know this is important to you and I know that you're giving me this instruction, but I don't respect you and I don't care about you or what you think or what's important. So I'm just gonna say no, I'm just gonna refuse. I know that you said it, I heard you, but I'm not doing it and you can't make me. <laughs> That's the hardest part of parenting. What do we do? I can remember when one of my kids were really young. This was when I knew, this was actually, this was when I knew that my child understood what I was saying. You know, you go through that phase where when they're really young, I'm thinking like nine, 10 months, when you go through and you're starting to wonder, like, do they, they understand me and they're, they're not listening. So you, you start to ask yourself, is this defiance or are they just learning and growing and developing? But this one day, I think my son was about 10 months old and he was in his high chair and he had a cup and it had some orange juice in it, just a little bit, I believe, maybe half full, a little kid's cup. And he didn't like the color of the cup. He wanted a different one. He was pointing and kind of, you know, telling me he didn't want this cup. He wanted the other cup. And at this point, I've got lots of kids, right? And I'm like, no, we don't do this. We don't do this at my house. We don't, we don't dump out juice and pour it into other cups because you want a different color cup. This is the color cup that you get. And maybe next time you'll get a different color and you can be happy with that color, but not this time. And so I said, no, I'm sorry, that's the color. That's the cup that you get. And he looked me, I swear to you, he looked me right in the eye. He held the cup out over the side of his eye chair, over the floor. And as he looked me in the eye, it was like a dare. And I just said, no, that's the cup you get. And he tipped it over and dumped it. He dumped it on the floor. And it was so planned that I knew, I knew in that moment, 100%, he understood. He knew exactly what I was saying. He knew that I knew, and I had given him an instruction and I had said, sorry, you don't get this. This is what you get. And he was saying blatantly, I don't care because I'm the boss here and I do what I want and you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> I've also had it with older kids where I've given an instruction or I've had a conversation and maybe with an older kid, they've just looked at me and maybe they haven't outright said no. Some kids do. I'm thinking my kids, maybe they haven't outright said like no, but they give me this look and it's this sarcastic, demeaning look that I, I feel like it says, you're an idiot and I have no respect for you and you're stupid. And I'm not going to listen to this because it is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And I don't have to listen to that. <laughs> now, they don't necessarily say that, but that's the impression I get. And you've been there. You've been there. If you've got younger ones or older ones, you know what I mean. It's that defiance. It's just that, mm, no, I'm not going to do it. And you can, you can say what you want. You can get as mad as you want. But their answer is no. We're going to talk about that. But I do need you to know. I need you to hear me. I've been there. 
that to me is the hardest. <laughs> so let's drop our shoulders, take a breath, and I've got you. <laughs> so I'm a family coach. I'm in the trenches with you. I've raised my own kids and I love them. We have great relationships now. We really do. It's worth it. It is worth it to put in the work while they're young on your parenting and also on yourself. It's 100% worth it because you want to have good, healthy relationships as your kids get older. But not every day is easy. I know that. I've been there. And some days the win is can we get through the day without yelling? Can that be a win today? Can we get through the day without crying? There was a time when I had three kids under the age of probably six, but two of them are very similar. They're 18 months apart. There was a time when I was crying every day and I just felt like the worst parent in the world. I was struggling with anger. I was yelling every day and I felt like they only listen when I yell. And this is the pattern that we're in is they just ignore me. They defy me. They say, no, they do what they want. I have no control. I'm not reaching their hearts. This isn't working. I get it. I get it. So let's talk about this scenario. When our kids say no, the first thing I need you to do is to come to terms with this. Now, this is hard, but it does make it easier after. I need you to accept this. Your kids get a choice. There, I said it. Your kids get a choice. They get to choose whether or not they want to listen. They can accept the family rules, the rules that are in place, the instructions that are given them by their authorities, which right now is mom and dad. They can choose to accept that and they can choose not to. And they get to choose. So we don't need to get so upset when they make a different choice. And I know we do. I know that we do. We take it personal. We take it personal because whenever, <laughs> and if you were just in the free boot camp that I put on earlier this fall, you'll remember this. Whenever we add in emotion that is unwarranted, whenever we overreact, we get more angry than probably we needed to be. You know, hey, I took that personal. I made that like I was really upset about that. I got really angry or really hurt. Whenever we do that, we overreact. It's because we've made it mean something bigger than the circumstance. When my kids look at me in the eye and walk away with that look, that look of you're stupid and I'm not listening to you. I'm not thinking about this circumstance. I'm not thinking about this one particular event, right? When I overreact, when I lose it, it's because my brain is making it mean more than what it means. My brain isn't saying, gee, my my child is, you know, defiant right now. My child is refusing to follow the family rule about curfew. No, no, no. My, no, no. It, I wish it was that simple, right? My brain is making it bigger. My brain is making it mean your kid thinks you're a stupid idiot and you have no control over your family and you're a failure as a parent and your kids aren't going to listen and they're not good kids and they're going to have bad lives and they're not going to have a good future and they're not going to be able to hold a job because they won't be able to be a good employee because they're not respectful because they don't listen to their authority and then they're going to not have a good life and it's all my fault because they're not listening to me right now. Do you, and and I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of exaggerating it a little bit, but but only a little bit. That is kind of where my brain goes, and your brain goes there too. Where does your brain go when your kid looks you in the eye and says no, or they just defiance? They just look at you and give you a sarcastic little grunt and then walk away. What does your brain do? It adds in that emotion because it's not just about this one thing anymore. You are making decisions about your kids' whole lives and somehow it's your fault. Somehow it's because you're failing. You're not doing it right. You don't have control. You're not able to reach their hearts. You are failing as a mom or a dad. Isn't that what we do? 100%. I need us to back off from that. First of all, recognize when it happens. That's the first step. And studies have shown thankfully, that just recognizing it helps to reduce it. So it is. it could be as simple as you're in the moment, you're, you ask your kid to get their shoes on, it's time to go to soccer practice, and they look at you, no, I'm not going. Oh, this is, oh, this is what I'm doing. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling that anger in my body. I want to yell. I'm so mad right now. I'm so angry. Why am I so angry? Oh, it's because I'm mad because it's not fair 
that I have to drive him to soccer and get him to soccer and he wanted to do soccer and now it's a fight every time we go to soccer because he doesn't want to do it, because he doesn't respect me, because he doesn't care about me, because nobody cares about me. Do you see what just happened? <laughs> Our brain makes, makes it mean more than just the event, first of all. Secondly, we make it mean something about us. Notice in that example, I started off being exceedingly angry about the event, the circumstance. I made it mean something bigger. And where did I land? Nobody cares about me. We always make it mean something about us, which you could say, I guess it's true. We're all kind of selfish. I suppose, yeah, we are. We are all the main character in our own stories, right? We're all selfish. And whenever we do that, whenever, whenever you overreact, your brain has made it bigger than the circumstance. It's your brain has made it mean something more and, and your brain has made it mean something about you. It's become personal. Yeah. It's become that you're a failure as a parent, that you aren't doing a good job, that, right, that nobody cares about you and that it's no fair against you. That's what we do. So noticing that, noticing it will help proven to help. Studies have shown that this helps to reduce it. Just noticing, oh, yes, this is what I'm doing. I'm overreacting. My brain is making it mean something bigger. I'm not really thinking about this one event anymore. I'm not thinking about my kids said no to me about going to soccer. I'm thinking nobody respects me. Nobody cares about me. It's not fair that I'm a taxi driver. <laughs> I see what I've done there. Okay. I've made it mean something about me. I'm going to stick to the circumstance. This is key. Stick to the, the circumstance. Stick to it. That's going to be step one. Backing off from all of that extra emotion, backing off from making it personal. It's totally natural. We all do it, but recognizing it, backing off, stick to the circumstance. That's going to be key. And then we're going to solve the problem. What's going on? Okay. Your child, whom you love and who is, is a great kid is being defiant. Your child just said no to you. Well, you gave him an instruction and he has the option. To, to obey or to disobey. He has the option to say yes or to say no. And in which case, you could just go back to him and say, hey, you know what? I gave you an instruction and this is our family rule. Our One of our family rules is that we get ready and we go to the things we've signed up for. We agreed to go to soccer. You agreed to go to soccer. And now it's really important that we do that. So you can't say no to this. You you actually need to follow the family. Well, I guess technically you could say no to this because I just said we, we give them a choice. You could say, you can't say no to this without a consequence. That would be appropriate. You can't say no to this without a consequence. So you can say no, but there's a consequence because our family rule is that we go to the activities that we, say, we said we would participate in. We will go there. We don't like to be late. We like to try and make it there on time. We like to give it our best effort, right? This is what we do in our family and we committed to this. So we're going to do it. We're going to see it through. Yeah, this is what we're doing. So we have to go to soccer. If you say no, then there is going to be a consequence for that. And now again, it's your choice. It's your choice to follow the family rule or to say no to the family rule. And then you're, you're choosing the consequence. So this is what we want our kids to see is I don't want my kids to obey me because they're afraid of me. I don't want my kids to obey me because they want to please me. <laughs> Even though some days that's tempting. I don't want my kids, right? I don't want them to obey me because I told them they have to or else. I want my kids to obey me because it's the right thing to do. And it doesn't always happen. I know that, but this is the goal. We want our kids to do the right thing because it's the right thing. So we have rules in place and maybe it's a conversation to have with your kids of let's talk about our family rules. Our family rules are when mom or dad give an instruction, we, we expect that the kids would follow through and say, okay. And if they don't, if our kids don't, then they're choosing a consequence. That's just the way it works in our family. So it's not like, oh, please listen to mommy because I, you know, I'm, I'm so sad when you don't listen to me. Uh, that is not effective. 
I know we try it. We try, moms and dads. You know, it makes me feel so sad when you don't obey. Um, it hurts my feelings. It makes me so angry. You make me angry when you don't listen. Like all of that isn't awesome because it feels like manipulation and it kind of is. Like I know you don't mean it to be in a negative way, but you're trying to get a reaction out of your child and you're using your emotions to do it. Instead, let's take a step back, stick to the circumstance. Okay, I asked my kid to come to the table for supper and they said no. And they went to their room and they slammed their door. Okay, I'm not going to make it mean things about my parenting. I'm not going to add in all of the emotion. All right, so what do we do in our home? What do we do in our family when our kids choose not to follow the family rule. And that's a conversation to have. Ideally, when you're in a good spot, like not at the end of your rope when you're ready to cancel Christmas. <laughs> Ideally, this is a conversation to have with me as your coach or with your partner. Like you're gonna sit down and think this through. Maybe it's a family meeting you're gonna have with your kids. If they're old enough, you can sit down with your kids and say, okay, Let's talk about our family rules. We have family rules about when mom or dad gives an instruction. We have family rules about technology. We have family rules about curfew. If your kids are older, there's family rules about screens in rooms. There's family rules about driving the car, what time we're home at night, um, how much, what's the boundary? How much privacy are we having with members of the opposite sex? Like there's family rules about all of this stuff. Let's talk about it ahead of time. I call it pre-teaching. Let's talk about it. These are these are our family rules. And maybe other families have different rules, but for us, this is where we land right now. For now, this is our family rule. So now the kids have an option. They have a choice. Are they gonna follow the family rule and get the benefits of family life? You know, there's good things that we do together. We have fun together, right? There's laughter, there's joy, there's peace. Do we do that? Do we, do we want that? So our family will run smoothly or our kids can choose to say no. They can choose to say, no, I don't like the family rule and I'm not going to follow it. And that doesn't have to mean anything to us because I don't know about you, but I am the kind of kid that had to learn through cause and effect. That's how I learned. I had to learn through what happens when I go along and I follow the family rules. And unfortunately, I had to learn by what happens if I don't. <laughs> Will there really be a follow through? Will I really be grounded? Will they really take this away? Will I really have to, you know, do the extra work? Like what happens if I don't? What would happen if, if you told me not to touch the stove? Oh my goodness. I would have to touch the stove. <laughs> what will happen? Why not? How come I can't? How close to this to the stove could I get? How close could I get my fingers to the hot element before it burned? What if I just touched it quickly? Like that, that is how my brain works. And for some kids, they learn best through cause and effect. So it's not personal when they say, no, I'm actually not going to follow the family rule. It may not be, hey, you know what? I got out of bed today thinking I want to make mom's life miserable. That's probably not true. They got out of bed thinking about themselves, thinking, right, about their own stuff. They're not thinking about you. Some kids learn through cause and effect. So when that happens, all you need to do is follow through with their choice. Hmm. Just now, you were defiant. You said no to me. That's against our family rule. So you chose a consequence. And here it is. You're like that simple. Could you be that calm about it? Now, this is why you have to have a plan ahead of time. You need to have some consequences in your mind so you're not pulling stuff out of your head because that will never go well. <laughs> you, that That's when you're like, you're grounded for six months, man, or I'm canceling Christmas, or you know what? We're all going on holiday, but not you. You're going to stay home. Like That's when we come up with crazy consequences that actually sometimes are not good for family life. Come up with something ahead of time. Talk with your kids. Again, if they're old enough, have that family meeting. What are our rules? What is our family about? What are our rules, our family rules? What are they? And then every kid gets a choice. You can choose to go along with the family rule and these are the benefits 
This is wonderful. This is lovely. We have fun together. You can choose to say no. And if you do, we will follow through with your choice. Here are the, here are the consequences and we will choose. Or maybe you'll say there will be a consequence and you might not know it ahead of time, but there will be a consequence. And then all you got to do is you go up to them and you say, son, daughter, my girl, I love you, but just now you said no to me and walked away. We talked about this before. That's against our family rule. So the consequence is you don't get to go this, to that event. You will be staying home. Or the consequence is I'm going to need to hold on to your phone for a few days until I see that you are following the family rules and you are being respectful and kind and you are saying yes to the family rules around instructions. Like I'm going to be looking for you to follow instructions. And when I see that, you know what, then we'll give you your phone back. We'll check back again in 24 hours and, and talk about it. That could work. Hey, you know what? It's against our family rule uh, to say no and walk away or stomp away or slam a door. Would you like to try that again? Maybe you want to offer some grace. Would you like to try that one more time? And that's when you'll really know because they're either going to say, okay, or they're going to look you right in the eye again and say, no, I was good with it the first time. And then you can feel doubly good knowing, okay, they are clearly <laughs> disobeying. I can see what's going on in their heart and there is some definite defiance. And then you just follow through. All we have to do, guys, is follow through with our kids' choices. We don't have to take it personal. We don't have to make it mean something. We don't have to make it bigger than it is. Stick to the circumstance and follow through. Let me know how that goes. Thanks for listening to the Families Matter Most podcast with Jen Dean, part of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. If you are interested in contacting Jen for one-on-one -on -one parent coaching, for speaking engagements, or just to get a little more information, please visit our website, familiesmattermost.com.